There's a popular New Year's quote that goes, if you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. And what I want to help you say hello to this year is more space and peace of mind. That's why for today's video, I put together this list of 23 things to declutter in 2023, and we are going to go through my home and declutter them together. And if you're feeling super motivated and want to declutter even more things, make sure to go over to the Get Organized HQ channel after you watch my video because my friend Laura there is sharing her list of 23 things to declutter in 2023 as part of our collab today. Before we get started, please make sure to give this video a like, and I would love it if you would go down to the comment section and drop me a comment below with one of your big goals for 2023. You can either comment or leave me an emoji that represents what you're trying to achieve. And on that note, let's dive in. The first thing that I want you to let go of today isn't a thing at all. It's limiting beliefs. And a lot of us have limiting beliefs about decluttering, that there's too much clutter, or it's too overwhelming to tackle, or that you don't have enough time to do it. But all of these are not true. They're just what you believe to be true. And if you hold on to these limiting beliefs, you're holding yourself back and not allowing yourself to even try to be successful. I'm someone who also had a lot of limiting beliefs about what I could or could not let go of. And over time, I was gradually able to peel back those layers and let go of more and more and more. So remind yourself that even if you only have 15 minutes a day to tackle your clutter, that's totally okay. And your home is actually very small relative to the size of the universe. There is a finite amount of clutter in it and you can tackle it. Believe in yourself. That's why I'm just going to take one basket today. I'm going to put everything inside of it and then sort it for getting rid of later. And then if you want to see how I get rid of my clutter, make sure and go watch this video afterwards. Let's go. The first thing we're going to get rid of today is last year's calendar. And this is something that's really quick and easy to get rid of. We are already in a new year, so there's really no reason why you should keep your 2022 calendar. I am using a calendar that I created myself. So I'm switching out the 2022 calendar and putting up the new 2023 calendar. And I like this one because it's minimalist and it has an entire year on a single page of paper. So it really helps me just quickly glance up from my work at my desk and know what day it is, what month it is, and keep me on track for my schedule. The next item on this list is unwanted books or books you only finished halfway. If you finished a book halfway but couldn't get through it for whatever reason, there's no guilt in letting it go. Sometimes books are there to teach you what you don't need. And any book that you aren't able to completely finish isn't a failure on your part, but an opportunity to realize, hey, this doesn't work for me. I bought this book after it was recommended to me by another YouTuber that I quite like. However, I didn't really resonate with this and I found myself giving up less than halfway. So I'm sure that someone else would enjoy this book. It doesn't need to stay in my library, so I'm going to let it go. It might also be that you read a book once and enjoyed it, but you know you'll never go back to that book again. And in that case, it's okay to pass it on to someone new and give them the chance to experience that book. Another item you can get rid of without guilt is unfinished DIY projects. So originally I was planning on mending the holes in these pants using visible mending, but my seven-year-old told me that he doesn't even like these pants anymore and he doesn't want me to mend them. So why would I put my time and effort into fixing something like this? So I'm going to say goodbye to these and also things like worn out slippers. So when my husband was painting, he was wearing slippers and he got paint on one of them. He threw that one away. This is the other pair. I made him let me save it so that I could talk about it in the video. But things like worn out shoes or slippers, get rid of those. And then the next item is used up pins. I don't know why it's so tempting to hang on with to pins that don't have any ink left in them. Open your drawer and see if there's any pins that no longer work. And if so, it's time to let those items go. And then once you've finished getting rid of your used up pins, check and see if you have any receipts lying around. Just make sure that you've entered them into the budget and then go ahead and get rid of them. Another easy item to get rid of is extra boxes. And I'm someone who loves to repurpose extra boxes to use to contain small items or to organize inside of drawers, but there's only so much space for extra boxes. And if you find that you don't have space to repurpose an extra box right away, 
go ahead and get rid of that item. Don't fall into the trap of letting extra boxes pile up in the hopes that someday you might find a use for them. Go ahead and let them go and recycle them. Now might also be a good time to get rid of unwanted Christmas gifts or holiday gifts. And if you don't feel comfortable getting rid of the presents that you got from this past holiday season, you can go back to the previous holiday season and ask yourself, did I enjoy this thing? Did I use this thing? Or did it just sit around taking up space in my home for an entire year? And if it did, maybe it's time to let it go. Now moving over to the dining room table, we have a couple items here like this broken water bottle that my son dropped at school and we had to replace it with a new one because it was leaking and then Besides the water bottle, we also went through some schoolwork. He actually went through it himself and he was able to decide on his own what he wanted to get rid of to put in the get rid of pile and what he wanted to keep, which was in the keep pile to his right side. So kids can make decisions on their own. So I'm just gonna take all of this schoolwork or if you have homeschooling uh, supplies, you can sort those out right now and get rid of them. Two more items that are easy to get rid of are things like instruction manuals because almost all instruction manuals are available online anymore so you don't really need physical copies. And then if you have kids arts and crafts, arts and crafts, arts and crafts supplies or scraps lying around, go ahead and toss those as well. Now to the next item on this list. For the new year, it's a really good idea to consider, are there any clothing items or accessories that my children have outgrown? And so right away, I know here in the entryway that there were a pair of mittens that Didi outgrew. And so we are going to get rid of his mittens. I will be donating these. And so what we did is we used the one in one out rule to swap out those mittens with some regular gloves. And I will put those back on the shelf and these will go to the donation center. The next item on this list is socks with holes in them. And you've already seen what our 100 year old floors do to our slippers. Well, the same thing goes to our socks. And you can see that my husband has some socks with holes in them. And then also I found some socks from my sons that have either been worn so thin that they're now see-through or they've also gotten holes in them. And we do try to wear our socks as long as possible and also repurpose them for cleaning to be more sustainable. But it, gets, it just gets to the point where you have too many socks. And when they're to that point, it's now time to get rid of them. Next up is junk mail, but I was only able to rescue this single envelope before my husband had already decimated our pile of junk mail. So here it is, sad envelope. Don't forget the junk mail. Moving on to the next one. Another smart item to declutter right at the beginning of 2023 is your unused subscriptions. So the best way to do this is to run an audit of the subscriptions that you have and take a look and see if there's anything that you haven't used for a while or that you don't enjoy and get rid of that at the beginning of the year. And that way you're going to save money each month by not having to pay for that subscription. If you're not even sure what subscriptions you have because you haven't been tracking them, you can go through your bank records or your PayPal account and see what kinds of subscriptions have been withdrawn and take a look at those and help you to help you decide if you want to keep or get rid of them. I hope all of you enjoyed that unexpected cameo by my husband, but now we're going to get to the next item on this list, which is unwanted cookbooks. And if you have any cookbooks that you know that you don't use, or you haven't made a single item out of them, and it's been years, you can go ahead and get rid of them. This is something that I got for free when I purchased a cookware item from this brand. And I have to say, I haven't been impressed with the cookware and this cookbook is really only encouraging me to buy more items from their line. So I am definitely not going to do that and I'm not gonna be making anything from this cookbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. Something else we can get rid of is extras. So things like extra medicine caps over the winter when we were getting sick and had some coughs, we built up a couple extra medicine caps, but we only need two at once. So I'm gonna set these to the side and then we can get rid of the extra ones like this. And then also just junk drawer trash like extra corks 
from wine bottles. Don't need those. And then things like these bread holders that my husband saves, but that I never ever use. These can go in the trash. I do like to hold on to rubber bands because we use them a lot. And as you can see, we're down to our last one. So I need to put this back there. Now we're here in front of where we keep our medicine and in the new year, it's good to go through the medicine that you have and make sure that you don't have any expired medications. And if you do get rid of them, for example, my son recently had to get a refill of his EpiPen. He has a peanut allergy. And so when we got the refill, we noticed that the old one had expired. And so what my husband did is you can actually turn in the old EpiPens at the Apotheca, which is kind of like the pharmacy here. So that way we know that it's properly disposed of, but let's also kind of check through and make sure there's nothing else that we need to get rid of in the medicine cabinet. So here we are in my bathroom and now we're going to go through my bathroom doors and just see what kinds of things we can get rid of quickly in here. Things like product samples. When we were going for our trip to Spain, I wanted to buy some Shiseido sunscreen, but they didn't have the kind that I like, which is this kind. So they gave me this sample, but I ended up getting this kind of sunscreen and said, which is the sport sunscreen. And I like it just fine and I'll keep using this, but I don't need this sample anymore. And so I can also get rid of that. Another thing you can get rid of is makeup that either doesn't fit your skin tone or that makes you break out. I got this stuff from the drugstore in the hopes that it would be good for my skin, but actually it made me break out in whiteheads and even gave me a cold sore, which I usually don't get. So I'm going to also get rid of this. And then the last thing in here is I bought, I bought two mascaras because I wanted to have extra but somehow, I don't know if I didn't close it properly or what, but one of them got super dried out. So I'm going to get rid of the dried out one and keep the one that's still in good condition. And the final item on this list of things to declutter in 2023 is your 2022 goals. So now is the time to look at your goals and reflect on them and see if you achieved them, if you didn't achieve them, and if you didn't achieve them, how do you want to change or modify those goals so that you can reach them this year? So I actually love setting goals and I set goals for myself in 2022. And I also created a vision board for my goals. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to swap out the things that I have on my 2022 vision board with the new images that I've created for my 2023 vision board. And if you want more help with goal setting or how to create a vision board, if you enjoy that, make sure to go check out one of these videos and don't forget to go check out Laura's list after this one. And I'll see you again next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.